Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a touchless Wi-Fi based smart water tank and salt level sensor for just $10. Now this smart sensor will help you monitor water or salt levels remotely and automate alerts using Home Assistant or MQTT. Now in case you don't have Home Assistant installed, this device is going to work as standalone. So it's a very easy DIY project. So let's dive in. Now to build this project, you will need the following components. A microcontroller, you can use any D1 Mini ESP32 or ESP32 C3 Super Mini. We are using ESP32 C3 Super Mini because we have that and it's very tiny module and I prefer this over any other microcontroller. Next, you can use a waterproof ultrasonic sensor and then you will also need a plastic enclosure to enclose all these components or a 3D printed watertight case. I have printed a case and I'm using that. Next, you will also need nail paint and we'll be using this to waterproof our circuits. Next, for automation, you can have Home Assistant. We need this for automations and alerts. Now you can install Home Assistant on any old laptop or use a Raspberry Pi. And there's a detailed guide that I've covered on how to install and get started with Home Assistant. So you can click right here and follow that guide. Now next, we have to set up the Arduino environment and for that, we need to download the Arduino IDE. Once downloaded, you have to install it and then launch it. In the Arduino IDE, you have to go to File, Preferences and in the Additional Boards Manager URL field, you have to paste this URL or this text. This is given in the description, so all you have to do is copy and paste it and then click OK. Now make sure your system is connected to the internet. Next, you need to download the zip file from the link given in the description and extract all the files. From the extracted folder, you will find two folders, Advanced Water Level Sensor No OTA folder and a Libraries folder. What you have to do is move the Advanced Water Level Sensor No OTA folder to Documents Arduino folder and then move the folders which are in the Library folder to the Documents Arduino Libraries location. Once you have done that, you can go to Advanced Water Level Sensor No OTA folder, which you just copied or moved, and then click on the .ino file. Now this will open up in the Arduino ID automatically. You can also go to File, Open, and then select the .ino file manually in the Arduino ID. Once the sketch is open, we have to make some changes, which includes the Wi-Fi details, so make sure you update the SSID, which is the Wi-Fi name, and the password with your Wi-Fi details. Now be extra careful while entering these because if you even enter a space, this is not going to connect to your Wi-Fi network. So be careful. Now if you have Home Assistant or MQTT installed and set up in your home, then you can enter the MQTT server details right here. You can also use free online MQTT platforms for this and you can enter those details here. Now, as I said earlier, even if you don't have Home Assistant or MQTT, you will still be able to monitor the water level or the salt level via the local IP. More on that later. Next, we have to enter the tank details. So you have to measure the height of the tank and the capacity, you can mention it. So in my example, my tank is 2000 liters, it's 130 centimeters. So I have entered those values. You can replace these values and then assign the GPIO pins. Now, I am using ESP32 C3 Super Mini, so I'll be using GPIO 2 and 3. If you are using any ESP32 board, you can use pin number 2 and 3. Now, in case if you are using Node MCU or B1 Mini ESP8266 base board, you can use GPIO 4 and 0. Now, once these changes are done, we are ready to compile and upload this firmware to our microcontroller. So, what we have to do is connect the D1 Mini or the ESP32 board to the computer using a USB cable and then in Arduino IDE you have to go to tools board ESP32 if you are using ESP32 board and then select Lawlin C3 mini in case if you are using ESP C3 super mini in case if you are using some other ESP32 board make sure you select that in case if you are using D1 mini or node MCU you have to go to tools boards ESP8266 and then select the appropriate board Next, you have to go again to the tools and this time we'll go to COM and then select the COM port where the microcontroller is connected. 
once that is selected we are ready to compile and upload the code so what we have to do is we can click on control and u key to upload it or we can go to sketch and click on upload in the arduino ide now this may take a while to compile and flash so just wait for it and once that is done your device will restart and start connecting to the wi-fi network and all these details you can see in the arduino ide logs now in case your device fails to connect to your wi-fi for any reason it will enter in ap mode after 120 seconds which is two minutes so you will have to wait for two minutes and after that it will start the ap mode or access point it will create an access point where on your phone you can go to your wi-fi settings and then connect to this ap point the password is one two three four five six seven eight and once you are connected you can open any web browser and then enter this ip 192.168.4.1 and then go to this ip address and here you can scan select the wi-fi and enter the password details and then click save and once this is done your uh, device will automatically connect to the available network and after that what you have to do and this is very important that you assign a static ip so that its ip does not change every time your router restarts or there's a power failure so ensure that there's a static ip assigned for more details you can refer to your router support or website support site you will find those details now once this is set up and that this is connecting to the wi-fi next step is disconnect it from the power and then connect it with the ultrasonic sensor as per the pins we have defined in the sketch now here you can use jumper wires or you can shoulder the wires i have preferred shouldering because i know how to shoulder if you know that you can do that otherwise jumper wires will work now at this point once the ultrasonic sensor is connected uh, you can connect the power supply to your board through usb cable or like through the gpio or through the input power pins there's 5 volt and a gnd or ground pins so you can connect those pins also to the power supply or you can connect the usb cable to power it on now if you have connected the usb cable and it's still connected to your system you will be able to see all the details in your id no id like it will show you the distance and everything and the status like it's connecting to the wi-fi and it's connecting to the mqtt server and everything so it will show you that now at this stage once everything is tested and you find that things are working fine you can enclose it in the enclosure and before sealing it off i will recommend that you use the nail paint transparent and then put it on the circuit board and this will help in like protecting the miniature circuits circuitry on the microcontroller and also on the ultrasonic sensor from corrosion or moisture and this is very important because this is going to be installed in the outside environment most probably even if it's installed inside i would still recommend that you use some kind of like nail polish or like something to waterproof it so i've used nail polish and it has worked really well this is the sensor that i have uninstalled after six months so this has been working for last six months and it has seen monsoon harsh cold weather of delhi and maybe it will survive the summers so still working it's not bad it's still working and i'm going to reinstall it again so yeah it's very important to waterproof these things and these are going to survive for a very long time if you do that properly now as i said you can access the interface of this device and use this device as a standalone device so once this is connected to the wi-fi you can go to the ip address and it will show you the tank level very intuitively and this refreshes every second every few seconds so you don't have to refresh the page every time it's all dynamic and in case if you have home assistant you have used home assistant mqtt this will show up in your home assistant and there you can create a card like this this is a beautiful card which is very intuitive and it shows real-time values of your water tank or salt level wherever you have installed it and i just love it i had this card like a meter card earlier but then i found out about this and i used it for my water tank level sensor we can change colors and other details all but we are not going to get into those details if you want me to create a detailed video on how i created this card and maybe some other cards 
that you may have seen well, in this video. Just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to create those videos. Now to take this a step further, like this is going to be installed most probably at the top of your house or away from your house where you might not have power supply. So in that case, what you can do is you can install 18650 lithium cell and a solar panel to that will also protect this case then install it so that way solar panel will run it during the day and also charge the battery and battery will run the circuitry throughout the night and this will continue for a very long time and this is what i'm going to do so if you want to see that video also please comment down below and the next problem that you might face is wi-fi range so one solution is that you go and buy a expensive wi-fi extender or a cheap extender that will still cost you good money but then you can get away with a two dollar wi-fi extender and that can be created using a d1 mini or node mcu esp 826 chip it's very cheap and it can give you up to 5 mbps speed which is really good for any iot device so i've created that video in detail so make sure you watch it and you can use it with your power bank you can power it through your power bank and in case there is a power supply you can keep it connected through the usb again you can waterproof it and it will continue to work enabling you to access your smart wi-fi enabled water level sensor remotely through home assistant and yeah in case if you have any suggestion to improve this so do let me know in the comments down below and with that said i hope you found this diy project helpful and if you did please comment down below and subscribe to support my work you can also show appreciation by just mentioning thanks if you really found this video helpful that's all for now. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.